feels empty now The pain builds up inside I tried so many times To imagine that you're here Pretend you're coming back Pretend that you're still near But it's no use now You've moved on But just remember this You got a piece of my heart So please remember me, my love Don't have a wash away those tears We both cry And as we go our separate ways I remember you each day And maybe one my broken heart Another lonely day Another sleepless night I wonder what you're feeling And who's now by your side I wish I could have changed the way the story Please remember me, my love Don't have a wash away those tears We both cry And as we go our separate ways I remember you each day And maybe one day you'll return With my broken heart
Happy time together, every day is a good day. Guys, welcome, John Valenti here in Las Vegas. Today, the sun is shiny, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's very hot, actually. Uh, extra hot in my kitchen because, you know, we have to switch off the air conditioning and with the stove going this morning because I had prepared something in advance, in advance it's kind of getting hot in here. But it doesn't matter because I am with you. It's 2 p.m. here, 2 or 4 actually to be precise, here in Las Vegas. I am Giada Valenti. I am a singer and a songwriter born and raised in Italy, Venice. We do sign language here, so if you're deaf you can understand a little bit. But I live in Las Vegas. It's 2 p.m. here, it's 5 p.m. for you guys watching from the East Coast and I see a lot of you appearing from there. I see a lot of Vegas people actually. Uh, to England, it's 22 at night. We get we got a lot of England people and Welsh people and people from Belgium, 23 ore 23 per voi che ci guardate dall'Italia. Ciao mamma, ciao papà, se siete in ascolto oggi o domani mattina quando mi guardi guardate. And of course, good morning to all the friends watching from um, Australia. We always have a few people from Australia as well, and it's very early in the morning for them. So I wonder how they're gonna cope today with the fact that they are gonna cook in a nice lunch or dinner, and we're gonna be making a cocktail. So guys out there in Australia, don't start neither with a cocktail, neither with this one. Just enjoy and make notes, take notes, and then make it later. So guys, how are you doing? Uh, I see also Ronnie Manicotti appearing today uh, from, uh, where is he from, JJ? The neighborhood of Cincinnati. The neighborhood of Cincinnati, that's it. Oh, and Mary Ann from Chicago, Chicago in the house. Guys, um, Saturday, we survived another weekend. It was a great weekend for me. Tuesday, we had Matt Gus, we went all the way in Vegas with a British superstar and we had an amazing time. Then Thursday we went to Italy together with Italian Living, a wonderful friends of Italian Living and we talk, as always, we, we talk about uh, actually the Lagoon of Venice, where I'm from. I, I made you discover the L'Isola di Sant'Erasmo, the Garden of Venice, and you guys loved it very much. So you learn a little bit where the vegetable and the fruits from Venice is coming from. It's this big island of the lagoon so you learn everything about the honey they make there the wine they make there the vino dell'orto and the very famous artichokes if you haven't seen the episode you can always go back to jada.live jada.live and you can watch that episode and any other episode i've been going live for more than 120 episodes so if you haven't seen that none you have a lot of stuff to watch Nevertheless, today, let me see what is in the agenda today. Today, oh yeah, I am a singer and a songwriter if you watch me for the first time. And on Saturday though, I am, I am a chef. Because today we are cooking, we are cooking something delicious. And by the way, thank you Diane for sending me every day. She sent me these uh, signed languages. So today we are cooking something delicious and I'm gonna tell you more about it. Something delicious and easy to make, like uh, all my recipe is a steak alla pizzaiola and it's made with polenta chips uh, that I made this morning for you. So otherwise it would have been too much uh, a long way to make. And uh, it's a recipe, even though I'm from Venice, Italy, uh, we make it all over in Italy right now, but it originated and is more traditional in the regions of Naples because they also where the uh, where the pizza was found and pizza iola comes from the word pizza. So I made today a traditional one, but you can add a, a lot of other stuff. I'm gonna tell you, you can you can make your home pizza iola like you, like you can make your home pizza with whatever topping you want to have. You have your bread and then you put the mozzarella, the tomatoes, the basilicum, and whatever else you want to put on top. Same thing is for this recipe. Anything you can put almost in the pizza, you can put in this uh, recipe. For this recipe, I'm gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna make it in a second. As I said, in sign language, we are gonna need some steak. We are gonna need some uh, tomatoes, tomato uh, juice, uh, tomato sauce, excuse me. Then we're gonna need some uh, spices, spices of uh, today. Actually, we are gonna use uh, oregano and we use some capers because it's the traditional one, salt, paper, olive oil, and we're gonna make some chips, round chips of polenta. And polenta is a typical thing from uh, Venice. So this is my take of uh, Bistecca alla pizzaiola because in Naples they don't use much polenta. Polenta comes from the region of Veneto. 
Venezia, where I am from, and is made of uh, corn, actually. So it's, it's, it's a nice dish, I'm gonna, you're gonna see in a second, it's easy to make, and it's made of uh, corn. So, uh, without further ado, before we uh, are gonna make this, and before we're gonna make this delicious cocktail, you remember, if you were with me on Thursday, we talked about wine, you know, I do not know anything about wine because I'm totally a no wine drinker. But when I started to cook, you guys were asking me which kind of wine can I pair with that food. And I felt that I was completely not knowledgeable about. I decided to educate myself and you were happy to take this education with me. We have started this journey into the planet of wine. I asked some of my friends from the region because I was, believe it or not, I'm from the region where a lot of wines is coming from outside Venice. So my friends of Bosco del Merlo here, you see, JJ likes actually the Pinot Grigio because this is, you see, he drank a lot. J I don't, but JJ likes Pinot Grigio. So this is actually a nice Pinot Grigio Rosé that as you have seen the episode of two weeks ago, I guess, you can drink it, it's delicious, a little bit cold, and you can drink it like this by himself, but you can make nice cocktails. And last Thursday, I presented to you three of them, and I asked you to choose one, and you guys chose this one, actually, that we're gonna be making in a second. Let me read what it is. It's called Mint Pinot Grigio Wine Cocktails. There it is. The ingredients, the instruction, and I think you guys chose that one because it, um, it needed to be shaked. It needed to be shaked. So last uh, Sunday, when I did my uh, Jada Love Sounds, Doug Hartlane, you remember Doug? Doug, already three months ago, with a general donation, he bought the mixer that allows me to sing. Not anymore on YouTube and Facebook, but we do every Sunday that on Patreon. So Doug, you made a donation when my phone ring. So yesterday, I used Doug's donation and I bought this one. It's already empty. It's a mixologist. It's a mix of all kinds of things, you know. <laughs> You see, where I can make noise, I can make noise, and I can make cocktails. So there were all these kind of things. So thank you, Doug. He donated $25, and it was $25 worth. So thank you. I'm going to be making... So Doug made me sing, and also made me drunk now. And you know, Doug is just like me. We don't drink. And so, and he makes also noise. Have you heard? So later, we're going to be making a delicious cocktails, but before, let me see what is in the agenda. I have here in front of me, my computer. We have, we have good news. We have good news. Here in Las Vegas, we have the amazing Neil Pornoid. Uh, I said in the beginning of last week, he got COVID-19 and uh, together with his wife, Dorothy, uh, Neil Pornoid is this amazing cartoonist that we have in Vegas and he made these beautiful Giada Valenti cups. I know many of you already bought it. And Neil is in the hospital still, but is doing much better. As in a matter of fact, this morning, he was answering messages on Facebook. And that's the cup that he made. And you can still buy them and you will support me and you will support also nail a pornoid and now we need to support more than ever and they can be shipped all over the world so no excuses guy Heather Heather hey, welcome Heather I think Heather are you from Belgium or from Wales and I'm, I'm, I have some of the new people in this wonderful circle of love that we have that uh, are staying with us and watching or uh, they were with us on Thursday they were fans and fans of Matt uh, Gus so I don't know exactly where you guys are from. Heather, I think you, one of, some of you are from Wales and some of you are from Belgium. I don't remember who is who, but I will. Keep join our circle of love and I will know everything. So let me know where you're watching from. I see also Alfonso Cutillo. Where are you watching from? Long, Long Island, New York. Welcome, welcome. We have Ute. Ute is also new. Ute, where are you watching from? Beautiful Jada sending likes from Sweden. There we go. So we have, and then we have Janet. We have Jenny Darling. Amazing support. And then we have uh, uh, Louise. She's working from Pacific Northwest. Maestra Escuela, Alejandra. She's wa watching from South America, Uruguay. Domenico Giorgi, un mio cugino, is my cousin. is watching from Priverno, Latina. And uh, so welcome, guys. And if you are new, please let me know. Oh, even my, uh, another cousin. Today is family day. Caroline. Caroline is watching from France. Yes, buonasera Giada. Buonasera anche a te, bella. Talking of which, so the good news of Neil Pornoit, that what do we have? Tomorrow we're going to have Love Song Sunday. And I know many of you have uh, joined the Patreon page. 
We move the music in a place where nobody will complain. We can sing, we can play. I'm not going to get any complaint. I have to pay for the page, so you guys have to chip in to watch the things. You can start doing that start from $1. And tomorrow, we're going to be doing it at 2 p.m. And uh, we had a poll with, uh, the, with you guys uh, that are already member could choose uh, songs. And you guys did an amazing job. So we are going to have tomorrow... Uh, a couple of uh, good songs that you guys have chosen and if you want to join the patreon that was the link jay just show you patreon.com slash jada valenti you still can do it with one dollar you see one sunday five dollars you see two sunday a month and ten dollars you get to see everything and if you want to support music with even more welcome to do it and i want to welcome yesterday we have salma salma i don't know if she's today with us but yesterday she had trouble joining patreon but of course all the people of the circle of love are so motivated to stay with me at the end she succeeded so thank you and welcome to Salma. today august 1st we are welcoming a new month è arrivato il mese di agosto august and it's an important month because in a few days we will be celebrating my father luigi's birthday august 4th and today is a personal also for me because it's also the birthday of my wonderful cousin Marta Milanese. I don't know if she's watching, but I show you the pictures. Marta with her red hair. She's having her birthday today in Venice. So happy birthday, dear Marta. Gli ho promesso che gli canto tanti auguri a te, tanti auguri a te, tanti auguri cara Marta, tanti auguri a te. I love my cousin Marta. She's a wonderful human being, a wonderful mother to Alessandro. She went through a lot in her life and she's a fighter. So, tanti auguri Martina, io e JJ ti adoriamo. And without further ado, before we cook and before we make the cocktails, cocktails with alcohol, this is a fine sign for alcohol. And Diane said, if you are having too much alcohol, you're going to get drunk. Oh, sorry, like this. Because this is acting and this is getting drunk. So, because one go down, the other go down. So, no much alcohol, but we're going to make something with alcohol in a second. So, first of all, we are going to have birthday and event in history, thanks to our dear friend, Doug Hartline, in Sacramento, August 1st, today. In 7074, are you guys ready? We go back in 7074, English chemist Joseph Priestley discovers oxygen by isolating it by in gaseous state isolating it in its gaseous states. That's like a shoyu lingua. But you know what I'm very thankful for was Doug saying, and by the way, me too, aqua gassata, as you see, the um, carbonated water. We can make a lot of stuff with carbonated water, and I just like carbonated water. So thank you, Mr. Joseph Priestley, for that invention. And in 1785, Caroline Herschel becomes the first woman to discover a comet, ultimately finding eight of them, one of which bears her name. There she is. And she contributed also even more to the field of astronomy. You can Wikipedia her, and you can learn everything. I did it yesterday. Amazing lady. And in 1893, Henry Perky and William Ford patent the shredded wheat. And Doug is saying, I prefer mine frosted with sugar, LOL, he was saying. It's hard to believe, Doug is saying, that this cereal has been around for nearly 130 years. And you know what, Doug? I never had one. We don't have it in Italy, or maybe in my family, we didn't. I will. I will try one. And today, in 1900... The first Michelin guide is published by the brothers Eduardo and André Michelin as an hotel and restaurant reference guide to encourage more road travel. This was a staple for homes in America and around the world. And do you know why they publish it? I didn't know, but this is kind of interesting. It, if they could get more people on the road traveling, they would sell more tires. Michelin tires, of course. How simple is that? Now that book is an iconic book. And in 1944, today, our beloved Anna Frank uh, made her last entry in her diary. Three days later, she would be, that's Anna Frank, a 13 years old, beautiful lady. Three, day, three days later, uh, she would be um, arrested by a tip of um, an, somebody, an anonymous uh, guy. I, I read yesterday, you can Wikipedia, last post of Anna Frank, I read it. it an, she was 13 years old, very eloquent. She writes to Kitty, her imaginary friends, and the last post is about, you understand better what kind of teenage, she was a teenager. She was fighting with her mom and dad, with everybody in the little house, because they couldn't understand her. I found myself as a teenager, so amazing lady. And in 1960, today, Aretha Franklin, you know, some music uh, history today, 
uh, has her first recording session, there's a big picture of it with Colombia when she's just 18 years old. And uh, 18, 1981, more modern time, MTV premieres today at 12.01 a.m. European time. The music uh, video cable channels whose original purpose was to play music video begin with a video. Video kill the radio star. Do you guys remember that song? I love it. Of the Buggles. Happens today. And in 1981, another uh, news, uh, music history, uh, the single Endless Love is released by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie and not only becomes the Billboard Songs of the Year in 1981, but also becomes the Billboard Greatest Songs duet of all time. My love, there's only you in my life. Oh man, I need a partner to sing the song with, but it surely is a beautiful duet. So any suggestion for a partner, for a partner to sing, let me know. JJ can sing. JJ, you can sing, right? Still? Yeah. Eh, he said no. So we need to uh, find a, a singing partner. Birthday of the day, beside my cugina Marta, that she was watching, hopefully, uh, today in history. Here we go. Birthday of the day in 1685, long ago, Petro Giuseppe Sandoni, Italian composer, is born in Bologna, Italy. We have to go to Bologna one of these days because it's a beautiful place for food and for traveling. His keyboard improvisations were compared to Handel, and it uh, was Handel, actually, who sent him to Venice from Bologna, it's only three hours by car, but at the time I'm sure it was much far away, to bring back the famous soprano Francesca Cuzzoni, whom he would hand it up married. So, love was born. And in 1685, Benedetto Marcello, we stay in Italy, actually in Venice, Italian author and composer, is born in Venice, Italy, my beloved Venice. He was a young contemporary of Vivaldi and his instrumental music enjoys a Vivaldian flavor. Not many people know about him, but there is a nice uh, legacy about him. The composer Rachmaninoff, we all know him, wrote an opera entitled Marcello, Benedetto Marcello, based on, loosely on the life of Marcello. And the Conservatorio of Musica Benedetto Marcello di Venezia is named after him. And there is even a street in Rome uh, that bears his name is uh, Largo Benedetto Marcello. And in 1770, 1770, today William Clark, the American explorer, soldier, and Indian agent and territorial governor who led the famous Lewis and Clark expeditions in 1804-1806, and claimed the Pacific Northwest for the United States, was born today in Ladysmith, Virginia. 1779, still a hold in time, Francis Scott Key, the American lawyer, poet, and composer, of the, wrote the lyrics of uh, Oh, say can't you see this? The American Star Spangled Banner today was born, he was born in Carroll County in Maryland. Francis Scott Key. And in 1894, we got to Italy again. I love all this Italian thing. Ottavio Bottecchia, an Italian cyclist who became the first winner of the Tour de France, uh, my father loved the, the cycling and Tour de France, was born today in San Martino del Colle Umberto, San Martin del Coe, as we say in Venice, because the place is where he was born is near Venice, Italy, near Treviso to be precise. So he was born today in 1894. 1898, we go back to America, Morris Stoloff was born in Philadelphia. Not only is known for his work uh, with Frank Sinatra, where he was the musical director for Frank's Reprise Record Company, but for his work in films where he won three Academy Awards and was nominated for a total of 14 for his songs in film scores. He was a child prodigy on the violin, and he was future as a soloist, uh, future as a soloist at 16 with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, amazing. And uh, so the movie studios wanted to have him and actually he ended up working uh, for Paramount and he switched to Colombia where he was the chief executive responsible for the musical promo promotion of all the movies of Colombia. Unbelievable. And in 1912, honestly, I never heard of him. Now I, I know. And in 1912, Harry Jones was born again in Philadelphia. Uh, he was a phenomenal character actor that appeared in over 180 films, yeah, even I know his face, and countless television programs. And in 1936, we go to France, Yves Saint Laurent was born in Oran, French, Algeria. He often uh, um, is, is, is thought about as one of the greatest French fashion designers of the modern era, but his career started with a position at Christian Dior, 
I, uh, this is very interesting. Um, and he worked there for two years where he got fired for uh, producing a poor collection. So he left and he started his own uh, company in the late 60s and 70s. And he continued to, beca he became of course very famous and he continued uh, to evolve his uh, career until 2002 when he retired from his positions. And he's the, he was in 2002 was the first living fashion designer to become honorary by the Metropolitan uh, Museum of Art with a solo exhibition. I was in, uh, I was not even in New York, otherwise I would have been there. I came here, I came to New York in 2005, so it was too late. We got to Italy with one of my favorite actors, 1942. Giancarlo Giannini is born in La Spezia, Italy, near Genova. He's an Italian actor, voiceover and director, screenwriter, and won a, a Cannes Film Festival Award for Best Actor for his performance in Love and Anarchy. He's great in that movie, and an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor for the performance in Seven's Beauties. And actually, uh, uh, if you look at his face, you can see him in many, many Hollywood movies. He has a very good agent. And in 1979, Jason um, Mom Momoa is born in Honolulu, Hawaii. Very handsome gentleman. And he goes now with the name Aquaman. Yes. So we have also a few birthdays that happened today when we were not live. And uh, they are worth mentioning. Um, first, uh, this one, Sergio Rossi. Sergio Rossi was born yesterday in 1935. He was uh, one of the most famous Italian shoe designers, for sure one of my favorite shoe designers. And he was born in San Mauro, Italy. He died, unfortunately, in April of this year, 2020, of coronavirus. But not before he left more than 100,000 uh, uh, euros to the hospital in Milan, where he was, uh, uh, was in, to help find a cure for the coronavirus. And in 1965, yesterday, novelist and creator of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, was born in Yate, England, and she turns 55 years young. Look how beautiful she is. And in 1966, we laugh about it yesterday with Doug, Dean George Kane, American actor, producer, television show host, and former football player, handsome gentleman I will add, best known for playing the role of Clark Kent's Superman in the TV series Lois Clark and the New Adventures of Superman, was born yesterday in Mount Clemens, Michigan. You see him there having a fight, how do you call it? Braccio di Ferro, we call it. Arm wrestling. Arm wrestling with Doug, and Doug said he won. So yesterday when I went live with Johnny Katz for his podcast, there you see, that's the pictures down on the bottom, Doug and, and Dean playing. So yesterday, because of that, I said, Doug, you are on duty. So yesterday, Doug was my bodyguard in case Johnny Katz was roasting me during the interview, the podcast, he was in duty and he would have taken care of him. John, Johnny Katz was amazing. So if you want to catch up the interview that we did yesterday, in case you missed it, you can go on the Facebook page of the uh, review journal here, the review journal of Las Vegas, facebook.com slash review journal. You scroll down and you can see the interview with pictures and everything. It was, thank you, John, for having me. Always, always such a joy. And a couple of events that happened yesterday worth being mentioning since I'm in Las Vegas. Yesterday in 1969, Elvis Presley comes to Vegas. Yes, he, um, he, uh, let me see, he's making his first live concert appearance since March uh, 25, 1961, and he plays the International Hotel, you see on the poster in Las Vegas, with, and he's going to be, to ended up doing 57 shows that helped revive his career and earn him $1.5 million. Unbelievable. And yesterday, also in music history, 1971, Sony and Cher, and Cher two of my favorites, uh, they premiere on CBS their uh, comedy, uh, Sonny and Cher Comedy Hours. I haven't seen the show, of course, but I found yesterday some little clips on YouTube, and boy, were they talented. So thank you, Doug, uh, for the birthday and events. There's going to be some news also about Doug and the birthday and events. I will share them very soon and um, I will, we, we will keep doing, but there's going to be some little changes in the in the production team. So guys, without further ado, we are going to make, before we're going to cook, because we are here to cook, we are going to make the cocktails. So I'm going to have the cocktails in front of me and we will be able to zip them if you want to make them with me. So here we go. We're going to make the mint Pinot Grigio wine cocktail. This is the sign for wine. This is the sign for alcohol and these all the things. So this uh, uh, things is made with Pinot Grigio. Here it is. 
This is one of my favorite. It's made with orange juice. It's made with some alcohol and actually it's Grand Marnier. And such, since I'm such a big drinker, not at all, I bought the biggest bottle I could find yesterday on the store and they were making fun of me. And I found also the biggest bottle I could find of mint liquor. There we go. They're small, but you know, when am I going to have it again? Never. So next time when you come and visit, you're going to have it. And mint, I even bought a mint plant. Here it is, because we're going to decorate it with some mint and we are going to make it in a second. Let me just go to my refrigerator to take my ice. I decided to leave it in, so... Here is the ice. We need some ice. Here we go. So I am basically just reading. JJ is showing also what we're going to be making later. I bought this little mixer that made a lot of noise. We are going to put inside four cubes, two cubes actually, of ice. Here we go. Then I'm just reading here because you remember, I don't know nothing about making this. But I'm going to tell you in a second if it's something that I like more than cola light. So Pinot Grigio, remember, you can drink the Pinot Grigio by yourself. It's delicious. JJ likes it. As you can see, the bottle is almost finished, but you can make also a cocktail. So for this one, we need one part of Pinot Grigio. I'm not going to be making a lot of it. So let's say half of my, like this. Let me, let me, I have to be precise. So it's going to be like three fingers of this. And because of that, I have to put the same amount. So three fingers of my... Grand Marnier, I think it's French, so it's Italian, French, it's all together. So three fingers of Grand Marnier, that's a lot of Grand Marnier if you ask me. But hey, we'll see, it's going to make two glasses. So we put it inside my, what is this one, a cocktail shaker? Yep. There it is, and then he said one ounce of orange juice. Okay, let me move out all this stuff. One ounce of orange juice. This is orange juice. I don't drink either much of orange juice because there's too much sugar in it. But here we go. And one ounce is the first. It's very little. This is one ounce. Can you believe it? We're going to put it in. Voila. One ounce of orange juice. And what else we're going to do? The ice cube I put in. And one little tablespoon of my mint syrup. Here it is. I have a very little spoon, so I'm gonna put this one in. Voila, that's all I need. Less is more, less is more. And then I guess they say that I have to um, just take this one, close it, and shake it. I love it when you call me Senorita. Here we go. I, how long do I have to shake this one, JJ? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I need a timer. Is this 30 seconds? No, not yet. Not yet, so. Uh, when my rimba rhythm start to play. We need a song. We need next time we're going to need some song for shaker. We need shake. Is this 30 seconds? Okay, JJ said so. So we take two glasses. Let me move out all this stuff. You, you need some crushed ice. Here it is. I have a refrigerator that crushed this. I have no idea how much I need to put in, but I just put in something like that. Just is gonna be very cold because there is already a ice cube in that one. Okay, is this enough, JJ? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, are you expert at home? If you are, you let me know. So this is my ice. Here we go. And then basically, I've learned that this little thing comes out, so the ice is not coming out, and we just pour it in. So a little bit here, a little bit here. If you ask me. All right, voila, he has a nice color. It should be sh sweet because there is mint and orange juice. So here is my thing. And then they say here that it needs to be decorated with some mint, which I bought a plant of mint, which is smells delicious. So I put some mint inside. Here we go, voila. And here it's our delicious Mint Pinot Grigio wine cocktail. JJ, you want to try one? JJ wants to try one. Can we do that or no? Yeah. Okay, so it smells... I can smell the mint and it's delicious. Actually, it's very good. <laughs> I'm not a wine drinker whatsoever, but this is very good. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm not going to be drinking much because, you know, I'm not a drinker. And I wonder if we can have orange juice and, and mint 
and no wine, I don't know, to make an, an alcoholic. I would make also some cocktail without the alcohol one of these days because we need to, to do that. Without further ado, guys, we need to cook because we are here to cook. We are here to cook, we are here to cook. So let me take my stuff, my kitchen. Now I became a chef. Today we are cooking. We are cooking a delicious uh, recipe that, as I told you, is a combination of what is Naples, because the bistecca alla pizzaiola is from Naples, and the polenta, the polenta chips, are actually something Venetian. So it's a Venice meets Naples all together. Uh, Michael Bonomo said, too much exercise, right? Yes, it's good for the arms. Um, so, what you need for uh, bistecca alla pizzaiola, it's uh, very easy. Uh, while we're cooking, then I show you also how to make the polenta. So you need some meat, some steak. Here it is, meat of your choice. Don't make it with chicken. Uh, it's too too mild as, it, as the thing. We don't make it with chicken. We make it with veal, of, uh, with uh, the... What do you call the other one, Jada? The... Veal, we make it with veal, by the way, or with steak or stuff like that, red meat. So, this is a sign for steak. Then you need some tomato sauce. This is tomato sauce. You put in the tomato sauce some olive oil. This is all sign language. You put some uh, spices. Uh, actually, this one has oregano inside because it's called pizzaiola, so you put the oregano in the pizza. So, you put it in this one, some capers. Uh, some uh, garlic, this is the sign for garlic, and Diane always gives me a motivation because garlic smells bad, so you need some uh, garlic, and that's it, you know. My recipe always have a few ingredients. Remember my grandmother used to say, if there are more than a couple of ingredients, it's not a recipe, it's something not good. So these are the ingredients. While I am preparing my garlic, did you put the wine in? I must have missed it. Yes, I did it, Joyce. It was the first things I put in. Because remember, I said in the cocktail you need as much wine of, uh, same portion of wine as Grand Marnier, and that's what I did. So, I peel my garlic. Here it is. I cut it in two pieces. Uh, where is my little knife? Here it is. I pour it in my little pan. I put the fire on, and I had some olive oil. Voila. So while that is cooking, just let it saute your garlic and your whole house will smell like garlic. You can also cut it in little more pieces if you want to have also uh, the more taste of garlic. I have some appointments to go today, so no much garlic for me. Actually, uh, I let it all saute. So this is sauteing over there a little bit. When this is a little bit turning a little bit uh, uh, brownish, you are, we are going to add the tomato sauce. This is the tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Uh, I bought, uh, uh, buy the best that you can find. I bought this one actually at an Italian deli here in Las Vegas, at Siena actually I bought it, if you are in, in Vegas. And I tasted it before because that's the good thing about the tomatoes. It uh, should not have sugar added and that didn't have uh, sugar added and because tomatoes is sweet by himself but if they have bad tomatoes they have to put sugar so when you buy your tomato sauce if it's written that they had tomato uh, sugar don't buy it or corn syrup it means it's not very a good one so you you can hear my garlic is making some noises it's cooking in there actually I can smell it and I would say I put my tomato sauce inside yeah it's making some noise let me lower the fl a flame of my thing here yes the tomatoes and you let it soda it a little bit a little bit you let it work at this point you can put in your oregano you can put it already in we put pizza in the in the pizza in Naples they put oregano it's called pizzaiola so it's like a, a ver it's like a pizza made with with meat that's what it is and this one is gonna cook and I will say you let it uh, uh, get a little bit away the watery of your tomato thing you can add also the capers as i said before this is the traditional well one you can also put olives if you want inside you can put any topping that normally you would put in your pizza you can almost put it in this uh, steak uh, uh, thing i i love i i made a simple one which is this is the original with only a few ingredients and you let it basically cook at this point well this is, is sauteing a little bit and drying a little bit you take your steak as thin cut as you can, I made two little things, and I don't have the thing I said to JJ, we need to buy like, a, it's like a hammer to crush your meat, so in my mixer cocktail that Doug got me, there was this one, so you basically are gonna smash a little bit your meat, 
because you want it to cook very quickly. So you break your meat, all the nerves or whatever it is. The softer is the meat, the better it is your pizzaiola thing. So you turn them around, you do it again. Actually, JJ, this one works too, only it's small. Normally the big hammer that we have, my mom and my grandmother had in Italy is a big one. So I always love to do this one as a little girl because it was like, uh, you know, being a butcher. It was a Rocky Balboa. And it's another exercise, a Michael Bonomo. It's good for the arms, actually, to cook this one. So my tomatoes, as you see, is cooking nice and gently. At this time, moment, we can put inside our meat. Here we go. It's going to cook very fast because the, the meat is not going to be that a thick cut. And you're going to add a little bit of salt, not too much. I like the sea salt in everything I cook, but you can put any kind of salt. And you let it cook a little bit. I give it a cook it and close it like this for a few minutes. And I made, as I said, a combination of what is Neapolitan and Venice. I made the polenta. Since the polenta, you can make it in five minutes. So you need only thing you need is polenta. You can find it. I found it yesterday in an Italian daily. I could find it also in a normal uh, supermarket, but I didn't have the instant one. They have the one that takes. Uh, half an hour, same procedures to make this one, this is the instant one, but it takes you half an hour to make it. This one really, it takes you five minutes. And JJ, so all you need is a few ingredients. JJ is gonna show you a video of something that I made this morning for you, of how you made what actually is gonna be uh, called the polenta chips. Yes, JJ, you can play the video. My meat is cooking here. JJ is playing the video. There he is. You need two cups of water. That that this morning for you guys. A one and a half cups of instant polenta. As I told you, you need some extra virgin olive oil and sea salt. That's what I like. Add sea salt to the boiling water just when you make your pasta. That's what we did. And then at that point, you add your polenta and you slowly, you slowly gonna stir. You put it in. You put some olive oil inside in the mix. You turn it around. Then you place the warm polenta on a par parchment paper. And you spread it around and you make it like a pizza, like you're making pizza. It goes well with pizzaiola for that, I thought. And then you take a glass, making sure that you, you make it wet with some water, and you cut the polenta in uh, round dishes. You put your favorite um, spices. I like uh, the kind of bagel things that I find at Trader Joe. It's already salt inside, so don't need to put salt. Some olive oil. You put it in the oven at the 380 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, uh, 130 gradi uh, centigrade, and you are gonna get what is already ready here. I can show you. Those are, sorry, those are polenta chips. As you can see, yeah, JJ, they turned around. Can you see them? Basically, you can also take them and eat them like this. They have olive oil, but I'm gonna serve them with my uh, meat. And you saw that there are some leftover of the polenta because polenta you can also eat it. I would make other recipe in the future where you can have polenta without uh, bake it in the oven. And if you do it, so I had some leftover. I made something delicious that I do it all the time. I put it in the oven. I had some cheese, as you can see. I'll show you in a second. And it's like a little cake that you can cut in pieces. There are some chips on top and you can heat it. You can do whatever you want. You can put salami, you can put pesto, you can put tomato sauce on it. So we are gonna have more polenta for tomorrow. Let me check now my meat. As you see, it's already cooked. I'm gonna turn it around. Mm, it smells delicious, guys. I hope you guys are gonna make it. And please, if you do, take a pictures of you making this delicious, uh, delicious dish. It's amazing. You can also have it, you have it with polenta, you can have it with... Um, you can have it with bread, you can have it with just a little salad aside, you can have it with uh, cooked potatoes, you can have it with anything. So the meat is actually uh, cooked. I just let it dry a little bit, so let me put this away. So it dries a little bit from the water. And the recipe is basically done. It's just time to serve it. I take my plates here. And believe me, you're gonna love it. I hope you're gonna make it. So let's switch it off. Here we go. I always have problems stopping this one. Voila. Yes, I did it. So let's serve it. 
So you take your pizzaiola, your meat, you put it in the middle of your plate. I made two little breaks, and you know what I cook is gonna be my lunch. Guys, the only thing I, I, I wish was that you were here with me to hit it. There is a lot of sauce, so I like to put it on top of it. So you can also have some roasted bread, you can have whatever you want, and if you have too much tomato sauce, I think I'm gonna left a little bit of this one. I'm gonna put it on top of the polenta cake that I made. So it's gonna be another pizza with a thing. You can play around. So I'm gonna take my polenta chips that I made this morning for all of you. And you just put them around on your plate like this. Here we go. And I think it smells fantastic. I made it a lot of time. And this is a simple, dinner of lunch idea i'm gonna give one to jj so he can start oh this one is bigger jj so this one is yours jj buon appetito and you have your drink this is mine in your honor i'm gonna taste a piece of it really guys i really wish you were here with me and you take a piece of your polenta actually i like to do it with like this with my hands I put some of my polenta mm, on the tomatoes. And then I take a piece of my meat. Delicious. And then if you want, you can have uh, your little, what was it called? Mint Pinot Grigio wine cocktail. I can even remember the name. I don't think it goes well with this one, but hey, <laughs> not at all. But I make it go, you know? Guys, I'm going to be drinking uh, probably this one later of Neva, but it's very good. Try to make it and be careful though with alcohol because, you know, remember, too much alcohol, you're going to get drunk. So, guys, I'm going to have my lunch. Uh, did I forget to say and mention anything, JJ? I just, uh, I see Lisa Maria is there. Yes, Lisa Maria looks delicious. Adder sends a lot of heart. Peter Formica from Australia. Hi, Peter, another Australian friend of mine. Can you scroll down, guys? I hope you're going to make this recipe. Please try to make it. It's a combination of, I see also Amy there. It's a combination of um, pizzaiola from Naples and polenta from Venice. Try to make the polenta. As I said, I'm going to head to the one I made yesterday with cheese. I'm going to have this one and I'm going to eat it cold and it's going to be, I'm going to take a picture so I put it on Instagram so you guys can see it. And if you cooked any one of my recipes, please take a picture, send it to me so you're going to be part of the program next week. Tuesday is going to be an interview with a, with a nice guest. I haven't really actually the guest for next Tuesday, but I have an amazing one for next week really amazing one of my favorite singer of one of the my favorite groups so i will be telling you all about it next week i'm going to be having my lunch i hope you guys are going to have a great weekend uh, tomorrow if you can join me at 2 p.m i'm going to be singing for all of you on patreon it's going to be love song sundays uh, you guys uh, help me choose the song and if you're gonna join me today you can join me and you can still uh, participate to the poll maybe maybe you change the polls lights now I have like seven songs because I we always do like seven eight songs uh, with stories and all so guys you're still free uh, to go there uh, you just go on patreon.com slash one dollar and you're gonna be part of it and I'm gonna have my lunch I'm gonna be seeing you tomorrow for the one of you uh, that are tomorrow uh, uh, around you can also join uh, Matt Gas tomorrow he goes on Instagram he always says a lot to everybody I see a lot of the Matt Gas people here with me I will probably also stop by to say hello guys what can I say today was a wonderful day I really love you all friends and family of the Giada Valenti live and ci vediamo domani I'm gonna be seeing you tomorrow and tomorrow I will be Giada the singer and it will be an honor for me to sing song for you. Buon appetito e ci vediamo domani. See you guys. Thank you for seeing me again. Though I'm here in my solitude. I smile again and so I sing here in my solitude waiting to see you same time same place and I can
can't wait to say again. Danke schön, danke schön, danke schön, dear old Alfie to say. See you tomorrow. A domani.